Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta, and today we are going to talk about meta analysis. The credit of developing this goes to the statistician Carl Pearson. First paper was published in 1904, in which the collated data from several studies was analyzed using meta analysis. Now, why this whole concept has came into the picture? Let's try to understand. A rough estimate says that there are 10 lakh articles published in 20,000 journals every year. The see the information explosion which is happening. Now, due to this information explosion, it has been observed that the research conducted on similar topics have varied results. There can be a contradictory outcomes on the same topic. And in this scenario, to come on common consensus among the researchers is a big and difficult task. So, the concept of meta-analysis is to reach at a particular consensus by aggregating the individual studies. The procedure for meta-analysis is based on theory, theoretical framework, browse offline and online libraries such as Google Scholar, Scopus, PubMed, Medline. Make the summary of abstract and title of the individual paper. Collect all the information which is relevant from the final articles selected. The information collected in the previous step has to be classified into grades based on researchers' judgment. Heterogeneity of the, all the articles is to be determined. Fixed effect and random effect models are used for the construction of forest plots. Summary effects for this purpose are estimated in the form of odds ratio. We will follow all these procedures when we will be carrying out our analysis. By running the funnel plot publication, bias has to be determined in this article. The summary effects are captured by testing the subgroup analysis and meta regression to various subsets of studies. Now, what's the whole concept of heterogeneity? Let's try to understand. When a research is carried out by different research on the same topic, it is bound to happen. It is bound to happen that there is some variation among this research. The presence of variability in the similar studies may be termed as heterogeneity. In meta-analysis, aggregation of individual studies should yield the meaningful results. So our objective is to do the aggregation, come to come on the common consensus. Now, the variations which are there, we want to classify into two groups. One, it is, is it a chance causes or assignable cause? Chance causes, it is next to impossible that the variation does not happen among the researchers but if it is in the statistical limits we will say it is a chance cause but if it is beyond the statistical limits we will say it is a assignable causes and it is a statistical heterogeneity you can see here the forest plot here the research is carried out by different researchers and most of them are near to each other and their studies are overlapping it means that the heterogeneity is less. Here, the variations are more and the heterogeneity is more. There are some measures of heterogeneity. First is Cochrane's Q. It is a weighted sum of squared difference between individual study effects and the pooled effect across the studies, which weights being those used in the pooling method is known as Cochrane's Q. Very simple. The null hypothesis of the Cochrane's Q is there is no significant difference in the effect size between the studies included in the meta analysis. The alternative is there is a significant difference in the effect size between the studies included in the meta analysis. So, if your p value is less than 0 0.0, we reject the null hypothesis, which means that there are the variations among uh, the studies is large. And if the p value is more than 0 0.05, we fail to reject null hypothesis. It means that the variations are not so large and you can report the aggregate studies very easily. Then there is I square statistics. It's a percentage of variation across the studies that is due to the heterogeneity rather than chance. The, the inconsistency among studies is captured by I, I square. I square does not depend on number of studies, while Cochrane's Q depends on number of studies. A rule of thumb says that if your I square is nearer to zero, that is 0.25, a low heterogeneity, 0.5 moderate, 0.75 high heterogeneity. 
let's see the next difference between statistical insignificant heterogeneity which is because of chance and statistical significant heterogeneity which is because of assignable cause in the first case it is because of chance here it is because of assignable here the confidence intervals of the individual studies have more overlapping area which we have seen in the previous case here we have a, we are having a less overlapping less overlapping our chi square p value will be more than 0 0.05 here it will be low or less than 0 0.5 the chi square test that is a cochran's q will be less than degree of freedom here it will be more than degree chi square statistics will be less than 50% here it will be more than 50 if we are having statistical insignificant heterogeneity, we will be using a fixed effects model. If we are having statistical significant heterogeneity, we will be using a random effect models. Our interpretation will be from random effect model. So in this case, our interpretation will be, there is no significant difference in the effect size according to the individual studies and it is not necessary. So the studies can be combined due to the presence of statistically in, uh, insignificant het heterogeneity and we can come on common consensus. Here, there is a difference in effect size according to the individual studies and so these studies cannot be combined due to the presence of statistical significant heterogeneity. Now, depending upon the statistical significant heterogeneity, we will have to use fixed effects models or random effect models. The fixed effect models assigns higher weight to studies with large studies and lower weight to the studies with smaller studies, smaller sample size. So, fixed effect uh, models gives higher weight to studies with large sample size and lower weights to studies with smaller sample size. It practically ignores the finding of the small study because the weights are not even appropriate. Uh, fixed effects model also assumes that the studies drawn for meta-analysis are from the same population, use the same variable and same outcome. Now, in, in practical or in real world, this is next to impossible that all the researchers follow the same research methodology. And therefore, to overcome this, we are having a random effect models. So in random effect models, the effect of small size studies are not neglected at the cost of large sample size. And the contribution of both the size of the studies is of equal importance. Now, in the presence of uh, heterogeneity, we are using random effect models for synthesizing. To capture the statistical uh, significant heterogeneity or not, a forest plot is used for comparing scientific studies. Now, let us see how we can carry out this thing in R. The forest plot is also known as Globogram. Okay, let's directly go in R. First of all, let me show you the study. So this is a hypothetical hypothetical study, which the analysis of which we are going to carry out in R. This is a study. Correlation is there, and the sample size is there. Now we will import this same file into R library. Read Excel, run. Data, read Excel. There are two methods in which you can fetch the data into R. This is one by the command. Another way is import the data set from Excel. I'll browse the file which is there and I can also import it from there. Run, attach the data. You can see now the data is imported or it is now in the environment of R. For meta analysis, you will have to carry. Uh, you will have to activate the library that is meta. Run. I'll be using the command m is equal to meta core. Now there are many functions of meta core. Whenever you want to see about the command line, just write down meta core, and on right hand side you will be able to see all the arguments which you can include in meta core. To make the thing simple, at present, I'm only including the correlation and the sample size. So M is equal to meta core run. R and N has been specified. Now we have got the table. We'll have to interpret this table one by one. Now you'll have to pay attention to 
Cochran's Q, degree of freedom, and P value. The null hypothesis for the test of heterogeneity is that all studies are evaluating the same impact. The above, in this output, you can see that the Cochran's Q value, which is 52.65, is greater than the degree of freedom. And the p value, which is less than 0 0.05, indicates that there is a presence of heterogeneity. Now you will have to again uh, see this value. This is i square. So i square is a percentage of variation across the studies that are due to the heterogeneity. This is not because of chance. This is a statistical significant heterogeneity. Here, I-square value is 90.5 90 percentage, which, which indicates the presence of strong heterogeneity. When the number of studies are few, the Cochran's Q has a poor power ability to detect the difference between the two groups. Now we will run the forest plot, the forest M. On right hand side, you can see the results. Now there are many things which you have to read in this forest plot first of all see this vertical line see this horizontal line and see the size of the square and see this diamond again repeat see this vertical line see this horizontal line of individual studies see this diamond this diamond is for common effects model and this is for random effect models so if your sample size is more the square will be larger if your sample size is small, the square will be small. Again, one thing, if your sample size is small, confidence interval will be large. If your sample size is large, your confidence interval will be small because the aggregation or rather by carrying out a large sample studies, we are more confident in our studies. Now, what does a central vertical line talk about? When studies are not significantly different from each other, they are indicated on central vertical line. It means that if your diamond is nearer to this central vertical line or this diamond is dissected by the central vertical line, this means that there is no, you can say, statistical significant heterogeneity in the model. And therefore, you can, uh, it is not necessary to report, uh, or rather you can club the results. That is possible. The horizontal line represents each individual studies and the width of the line indicates the 95% confidence interval, this one. The square box in the forest plot represents the effect estimate of each study. At the bottom is a diamond, which is the aggregation of all the studies. The overall comparison of the study is indicated by the diamond which is plotted at the bottom of the forest plot. Two diamonds represents random effect models and the fixed effect model. These diamonds do not have 95% confidence interval line, but instead their edges, see, you can see the edges, their edges represents the confidence interval. So in the above study, the central vertical line does not intersect the edges of the diamond and the p-value is less than 5% level of significance. So this p-value, less than 5% level of significance. Moreover, the statistical uh, significant heterogeneity is there, which means that the significant difference exists in between these groups. In meta-analysis, there is one more concept which we have to understand, that is a publication bias. It was given by Theodore Sterling in 1959. According to him, the chances of successful research being published are more in comparison unsuccessful. It has also been observed that positive findings being published, uh, that is the findings which are positive are more in comparison to the negative findings. For instance, once a, research, a result is established by a stalwart or a very renowned academician, all others try to align their research in the same direction. The studies published in peer-reviewed journals are likely to report statistically significant results. Just for a, sim a simplicity, I'll tell you one thing. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we are, uh, the chances of uh, publishing this research 
is more. But if your p-value is more than 0 0.05, you did not got significant result among the variables, then chances of such research being published are less. So the inconclusive research, if we are having, then its chances of publication are very less. This phenomenon is known as publication bias. Publi publication bias gives false conclusions resulting from a type one. It has been observed that if more and more such such type of publication happens, the original knowledge gets contaminated. How many types of biases are there? The first biases are publication bias. Second is a location bias, language bias, citation bias, multiple publication bias. Then again, poor methodologically quality of smaller studies. There is a design inadequate analysis, fraud, then true heterogeneity, artifactual chance. So this is given by Danny Yakub. The source is methodological framework for evaluation and prevention of, prevention of publication bias in surgical studies. Now let us see how we can carry out this analysis in R. So I'll run funnel M. Now you can see that there is an asymmetry in the funnel plot. So we can say that publication bias is present in this studies. Now we want to carry out the prediction on the basis of this analysis. So the prediction intervals are plotted to find out the range of effect if any new study is carried out at 95% level of confidence. The command line is MP is equal to metacore R N prediction true. MP again and again I'll run forest MP. You can see this red line now which was not previously present. So what is the interpretation of this? Let's try to understand. The red line here gives a prediction interval of any new study conducted. The effect of any new study conducted will be in the range of minus 0.30 to 0.86 at 95% level of confidence. This is all about meta-analysis. All these codes are available in my book, Data Analysis Using R. This is available on Amazon.in as well as Amazon.com. You can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I'm going to upload more and more videos of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data science. Kindly subscribe to my channel. Thank you.